I'd like to follow up on uh, the issue of masks. Uh, in, in early April, the CDC reversed its initial guidance from masks being optional to advising the public to wear cloth masks in public spaces at all times. In spite of this advisory, U.S. culture has continued to be a, a barrier to a universal acceptance of these recommendations. Uh, mask wearing, wearing, unfortunately, has become very politicized, and those who oppose their use argue that mandating masks is interfering with individual freedoms. A recent study by a group of Cornell University scientists showed that when quarantines are lifted, if 80 percent of the population wears masks with social distancing, the virus could be eliminated. Unfortunately, to date, only 15 states require the wearing of masks in communal places, and our president continues to flaunt his opposition to this public health recommendation. Based on the science, uh, why did you initially uh, uh, recommend uh, the mask as optional? And what fears do you now have regarding the spread of the virus if states and individuals can't be incentivized to wear masks in public, including during these massive protests that we have recently witnessed throughout our country? Thank you very much. I think fundamental to this was the recognition of the importance of asymptomatic uh, infection or pre-symptomatic infection. When this outbreak originally ha happened, CDC had the original 12 cases in the first uh, January, February. We did about 800 contacts through our contact follow-up. Two of those individuals were confirmed to be positive, both symptomatic and both spouses. So we had the view from our Chinese colleagues and their experience and our early experience that this was a symptomatic disease like most respiratory viral diseases were. But what we rapidly started to learn is there's significant asymptomatic infection and or what we will call pre-symptomatic infection. And we've learned that the amount of virus that's shed in individuals that are asymptomatic is just as uh, high as the, that and symptomatic. And when that knowledge base came, we realized that we had a pub, an important public health tool that we needed to take advantage of. And that's if people were asymptomatic or pre-symptomatically infected, if they were wearing a face covering, that they would have less ability to transmit to others. And that's why we embrace this important public health tool. And I will say uh, that I, we continue to see this as a critical public health tool, as I said in my opening statement that we ask the American public uh, to be vigilant about uh, utilizing, particularly as a major mechanism that we have to protect the vulnerable. And, and can you uh, also elaborate on what your concerns are then when you see these mass uh, protests, when you see as things are opening, when you see people on the beaches and in public places who are not wearing masks? Uh, what What is your concern of what the a possible outcome of that will be in terms of the spread of the disease. Yeah, obviously we're, we're, we're very concerned that our public health message isn't resonating. We continue to try to figure out how to penetrate the message uh, with different groups. Uh, the pictures that the chairwoman showed me are great examples of uh, serious problems, um, you know, and I can say that um, we will continue to try to message as well we can. Uh, we're going to encourage people to uh, that have the ability to re uh, request or require a mask when they're in their environment to continue to do that. We do think this is an important public health tool um, and it uh, we're going to continue to try to figure out how to get more and more people to embrace it. I was just remarking when I will go home in the Baltimore area, I don't see anybody without a mask. But a lot of times when I walk through Washington, D.C., I see a lot of people without a mask. So there's different cultural uh, approach to it. But we think it's an important public health message, and we're going to continue to stress it. I think it's going to be key. Uh, these social distancing strategies that we've learned um, are something we need to perfect because we're going to need them to be our major defense again in October, November, and December.